it's not about yourself, it's about your team. Division three allows you to give yourself to other things. I chose Cedar Crest because it's nationally ranked for its forensic science program. And then I also chose Cedar Crest because I could come here and play sports. I could be a basketball player and then I could be a student athlete and my teachers would understand that. At a Division III school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. The end result in my mind is you just become a very well-rounded person. I know sports is important, but having the academic part along with it is a big plus. There's more to them than being a student athlete. They're a club president, they're a student in the classroom, so it's a well-rounded experience. Uh, Division three school was the best opportunity for me to have both the highest academic challenges and some of the very uh, highest uh, athletic challenges too. So that's why D3 Athletics is so great. It gives you the opportunity to get involved in so many different things and be able to still do all those things. D3 school, there's a lot of time for other opportunities. During soccer season, the coaches, they expect a lot of you during soccer, but after soccer, that's your own personal time. Um, it's your time to go explore different things and really find out who you are and other opportunities that you can pursue. Division three in athletics, you know, affords students the opportunity not only to participate in uh, intercollegiate athletics at a competitive level, but also gives them the opportunity to, you know, engage in the other interests in their campus and in their lives outside of that sport and outside of the academics on the campus. I wanted to be really balanced. I wanted to be focused on academics and athletics and be able to do other things that I wanted to do. And I knew Division Three would be able to not only let me do that, but support me in that. You have more time for your extracurricular activities outside of school, whether it's not academics, um, spending time with your family, your friends, and those are things that are important to me in a college experience. Being a Division Three athlete and developing my leadership skills has definitely put my name out there and helped me get um, more recognition on campus, but more recognition nationwide. I did win the Jostens Trophy, which is based on leadership, academics, and then how well you do on the court. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division III. Division III schools offer academic scholarships instead of athletic scholarships. This really puts the focus that the student athlete needs to maintain that GPA. I got the presidential scholarship from Case Western, which was huge for me. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school, and I carried that for my first two or three years. I did receive academic scholarships my freshman year and then every single year I get a little bit more because of my academics. Just being involved on campus, being an athlete and then being a leader in so many different clubs. All those things combined kind of get me recognized. Don't pass up a Division III school if you have the opportunity. Division III offers many experiences. I would definitely choose Division III school because you can develop your leadership skills. I mean, basketball and academics are so important here, but you can also develop like who you are as a person. There's a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is Hope. fans, welcome to DeVos Fieldhouse on the campus of Hope College for the 2023 Division III Women's Volleyball Championship. We are here in round number two 
Game number six out of seven this weekend. One more tomorrow night. The Transylvania Pioneers have already punched their ticket to the Sweet 16, and we are waiting to see who will join them between the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, Pointers, and the Hope College Flying Dutch. I'm Eric Van Swall alongside Carly Van Swall on the call. And real quick, the NCAA thanks our corporate champions, AT&T, Capital One, and Coca-Cola, and corporate partners as well. Buffalo Wild Wings, Buick, Dick Sporting Goods, Great Clips, Intuit TurboTax, Invesco QQQ, LG, Marriott, Nabisco, Nissan, Pizza Hut, Reese's, Unilever, and Wendy's. Their support enhances NCAA championships and the educational and athletic experiences of nearly half a million student athletes. And fans, you can now access the official NCAA digital game program on your mobile device, tablet, or laptop free of charge. Visit NCAA.com slash game programs for an inside look at today's championship. And as I said, it's hope against Wisconsin Stevens Point. Carly, word on the street is these teams have faced each other in the NCAA yeah. tournament before. That is true. Back in 2013 in the final four here at Hope College, too. We're getting a little bit of a repeat. repeat. However, it was a little further along in the tournament. Hope lost in three sets. They got swept by the pointers. Um, and so the pointers ended up in the national championship that year in 2013. The Stevens Point fans hoping that is the case. I can guarantee the dogs will be barking tonight. Yeah, they will. As you see the officials and both teams doing the ceremonial walkout. Carly, we're gonna get starting lineups real quick. The national anthem was played prior to the Pacific Lutheran and Transylvania game. So we won't get that, but uh, 30 second thoughts before the starting lineups, Carl. Pointers. They won in five sets after coming after being down two. They came back, and I really credit that win to Mozinski. Mozinski brought the firepower and the energy. She had seven blocks last night, and when her team was feeling low, she brought the energy. You're gonna see her loud tongue out. She's going to be your energizer bunny for this team, and she was a huge factor in their win last night. The Dutch won in three sets. They started off slow. The first five, ten minutes of that game did not look like the normal Dutch team that we're used to seeing. Um, but both teams had it figured out by the end of the day yesterday. And now we're going to get the lineups for both squads. Number two, Olivia Jinkwars. Number five, Aaron Gillen. Number nine, Meredith Mills. Number 10, Summer Soleto. Number 12, Maddie Hansey. Number 16, Zoe Kramer. Number 18, Lauren Shaw. Number 21, Samantha Keppinger. Number 22, Katie Larson. Number 24, Jaden Klarner. Number 26, Olivia Faulkner. And now starting for the pointers, a freshman defensive specialist, number three, Tessa Erlinson. A junior setter, number four, Grace Mikulski. A sophomore defensive specialist, number seven, Emily Nielsen. A freshman defensive specialist, number 14, Riley Zeller. A Frenchman, middle blacker, number 23, Carly Tomka. A junior middle blacker, number 25, Sydney Mosinski. And a junior outside hitter, number 27, Ashley Kopp. The pointers are coached by head coach Lindsay Clapper. She's assisted by Molly Stock, Nicole Lund, and Kendra Byroll. And now, let's meet the Hope College Flying Dutch. Number one, Kate Lortzma. 
Number three, Natalie Panucci. Number four, Annie Lockett. Number five, Gracie Allen. Number seven, Natalie Dunn. Number eight, Jenna Bloom. Number nine, Jenna James. Number 10, Ella Cantant. Number 12, Catherine Oates. Number 15, Eva Hardung. Number 18, Sammy Seib. Number 19, Ashley Murray. And number 21, Brooke Fox. Now starting for the Flying Dutch. A senior, a, a senior defensive specialist, number two, Grace Marshall. A freshman middle hitter, number six, Cameron Burbridge. A sophomore setter, number 11, Lauren Lee. A junior middle hitter, number 13, Liz Vanderslice. A senior setter, number 14, Olivia Feebing. A junior middle blocker, number 17, Allison DeWeird. And a junior outside hitter, number 22, Addie Vanderweide. Coaching the Flying Dutch's head coach, Becky Schmidt. She's assisted by Carrie Lahaki, Juliana Primus, Amber Morse, and Gabby Vachon. Folks, the starting lineups for the Pointers and the Flying Dutch. Winner advances to take on the Transylvania Pioneers tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here at the Moss Field House. as Jet's song is playing in the background to warm up. And it's gonna be a game of who can step on the gas early and keep it on, keep the gas on hard because both teams are so good. We're gonna see both teams go on runs at some point and you gotta keep the energy up. Don't sweat the small stuff, shake off the mistakes and make things happen. We talked about how far Pacific Lutheran traveled. Transylvania, just over 600 miles. Stevens Point, Wisconsin from Holland, Michigan is 405 miles away. Of course, the Dutch and Dutch faithful did not have to travel quite that far for this opening couple of rounds. But the Pointer fans are out and ready to go. Still rocking the purple and gold. And Hope is going to start it off. Lauren Lee, the setter. Serves it to Nielsen in the back row. And guess who starts it off? Mosinski missing just wide right there. Mosinski, a great player. You're not gonna see a lot of errors out of her. Still has a smile on her face, but good first point for the Dutch. And this time it goes to Zeller in the middle back row and Ashley Kopp gets in the action to start. 18,000 kills and counting in her career. That's a slight hyperbolic statement there. <laughs> Kopp, you'll be hearing that name a ton tonight. She had her 23rd double-double of the year last night with 15 kills and 10 digs. So you'll see her active at the net and in the back row. Hope off kilter right there. Grace Marshall passed it to the referee. And we saw Hope off to an off kilter start yesterday. They were slow off the bat. They were frankly the slowest starting team out of all yeah. eight if if I Which is wild for the had home to team. state one, right? 
Maybe the added pressure of being in the NCAA tournament and playing at home. Lauren Lee with the one-hand dig. And the jump shot from Vanderslice goes just too long. Draws back iron. Great trail to, by Hansi to follow that all the way to the line. Good hustle to make sure that was going out. Erlinson serving 3-1 lead early for the pointers. Burbridge getting in with the middle set attack. Roll shot deep in the corner. Picked up by Marshall for the Dutch from Kopp. Hope just playing it over the net. Kopp a little more traditional there. And the wall is built in front with Burbridge and Vanderslice. Great strong start, excuse me. Burbridge dominated with her blocks yesterday and it's awesome to see Vanderslice and her get the double block to get them the point for this last possession. They would have gone down 4-1 were it not for that block and the service error there from the MIAA MVP, Addie Vanderweide. Vanderweide did have a, a service error yesterday. If you're a Hope fan, you don't want that's become constant for the Dutch. Michalski back to serve for the pointers, and that was short-lived as Burbridge and Lee struggled last night early on, were able to connect that time around. Yeah, that was a connection that the Dutch really missed out yesterday. Usually that's automatic for them, and so I don't think they even found it at all yesterday, so it's cool to see early on in this first set they found it. And back-to-back -back service errors from the Dutch. Service errors were a problem in the previous game prior to this one. Yeah, you have to differentiate which previous game you're talking yeah. about when this is game number six out of seven here. Phoebe receiving a tough serve from Cop. Back row attack from Vanderweide. Waiting in the middle was Carly Tomka. What a dig back there by the libero Erlinson. Shaw stuffed by the Hope defense, and it lands in. And DeWeird and Vanderslice there. Awesome job putting pressure on the outside hairs. That's going to have to be a theme for the Dutch tonight to be successful. Sammy Seib serving it up. Stevens Point looking for the side out. A dropping like a rock serve right there. Great up from Stevens Point. Tomka came over with it. On the slide is DeWeird. And the point, they ran that play ad nauseum yesterday. Yeah, that led to DeWeird having 11 kills just off of that slide play from the D set on the right side. Back set for Shaw just inside the antenna. And it's good. Check that, that was a little. The long hair blocking the numbers throw me off every <laughs> once in a while. Serving is Carly Tomka. Again for DeWeird, she came cross court, waiting for it was Grace Michalski. Tapped over by Lauren Lee, where no one was home for the defense. Usually Lee waits until later on in the set, or even doesn't even usually do it the first game. It's cool to see her bring it out early, perfect spot. Usually she tries to make it in the corners by the 10 foot line, but that's one of the deepest pushes I've seen from her this season. I have to agree with that assessment right there. As she quick side eye it, Tomka was almost there for it. And shaking, bacon, elevating. Right there was Lauren Shaw, the freshman, showing what she can do. She had 13 kills last night, and I have a, a good feeling she'll be close to that number today. Like you said, especially at this juncture of the tournament, how many teams just have options when it comes to hitters? And Hope's option there was Vanderweide going right back to the well. The slow ball, and it works. Michalski had a part of it right there, and Zeller was thrown off by the partial block. Vanderweide, a usual for Lee to set to, and so the defense for the pointers, rightfully so, she loves the line and cross court shots, was set up for that, was not set up for the tip. Shaw bringing the fire early in this one. Another kill for her. Full swing, and he got it. The first ball's great. Gives the time for the setter to get a good pass out, good set to her outside hitter. 
Shaw can hit it in stride and get a good foul through. And it's 8-7 in the early going. Advantage pointers with Nielsen serving for the folks out of Wisconsin. Vanderweide hits it wide off the block. I like that the block's there, continue to challenge Vanderweide. That time, Vanderweide just got the correct rebound off of it. Well, like we said, sometimes you just bring the sheer power. Yeah. And if you don't go full throttle on that, it probably lands in play, mm -hmm. especially with the angle on the defense. Curling around the outside was Mosinski, and Lauren Lee touched it cross court. Yeah, I had a good chance of going out. I, I had the same feeling, of course, less than a split second decision mm -hmm. right there, whether you're gonna try to take it or not. She attempted to, and it's a point for the pointers. Burbridge in the middle, saw the back row was offline and she dumped it in. Yeah, that was a smart call. She surveyed the defense right away and even before Lee had the ball in her hands, she made that call. Wasn't her best connection no. overall, but it was sufficient that time around. Love to see the freshman take charge. Nielsen not the best first pass, but Erlinson was able to get it over for a cop and Speaking of freshmen taking charge, yeah. Cameron Burbridge in the middle, another not great connection. Right. Even she's got a look yeah. on her face. But hey, it works. And as long as the ball hits the floor inside the lines on your opponent's side of the net, doesn't really matter what you did. All that matters. The wingspan is helpful for sure. <laughs> Very true. And not helpful on that play as Brooke Fox goes careening into the pointer side of the court. Good change of pace there from the pointers. Keep and the Dutch on their toes. And here's Michalski. Hitting Vanderweide up front. They go back to Burbridge and she caught too much net to make it four hits against the Dutch. And again, still was not getting a good hand on that ball. She was still hitting that with her fingertips. We have seen some fantastic middle setting and hitting this tournament. We'll see if Lee and Burbridge can figure it out and they do right there. Try, try again. They'll get it to work. That's right. Their connection is too strong and has been too good this season for them not to get it down. And, you know, we're, we're talking about them not being efficient together and where they have three out of <laughs> yeah, five kills say, yeah. or conversions there. Vanderweide tried to ding that one, dig that one. Vander Slice almost found the crowd. Huge swing there. I did do a disservice to that kill there because that was that was a hard hit. That was big time. I always get distracted when when folks run into the crowd. <laughs> it kills me that that's like actually able to still be yeah. in play as Brooke Fox gets the kill right back. And there's a shot of that crowd that we were referencing. Fox last night made a splash. Side with Hope's third service error. A quarter of Stevens points points have come off of service errors from the Dutch halfway through this first set. Yeah, usually a strong serving team. Skill that the Dutch can usually count on pretty easily. Carly Tomka serving for the pointers. That one's in. Phoebe with the bump pass set to Brooke Fox. The defense handles it. Off the net from Shaw. Back set slide for DeWeird popped up. And again, it's at the net, it's a joust, and Lauren Lee wins the joust at the net once again. There's been few jousts this season that I've seen Lee not get, and she can hang with the best of them at the net. Five foot seven, going up against six foot. And she pulls it out for her squad, 13-13. Shaw with a little extra rage in that one. Yeah, Shaw wanted that momentum back on their side. 
I do like the block, though. Keep putting the block there. If you can get a touch on there, that gives your back row more chances to get there. And they almost did. Yeah, it was close. Keep doing it. Marshall was inches away from a pancake. Whether or not that would have been high enough for to get it over the net, who knows, but as Hope plays it over with Syme there. Back set for Mosinski, it hangs on top of the net, falls the pointer's way. They have another opportunity. Shaw, Feebing gets it up in the air, middle for DeWeird, tapping it over. Up again for Shaw, off the net, off the block, and out. Hey, give credit where credit is due. Shaw, of course, with a nice play there, but number 14, Zeller, who's going back to serve right now. Great coverage, made some really good passes and digs there to keep that ball alive for her team. And she serves it to Olivia Feebing. The one senior recognized on senior night as Ashley Kopp tries it from the back row middle and can't find the floor. Points for college. I like the weird serving. Kopp also not one to have a lot of errors. Another back and forth set, 15-14. Kopp with the first pass there. Michelski over to Shaw. Raw power again, but the Hope defense was ready for it. First ball was a side, near side, Vander wide. Can Stevens Point get it over the net? They cannot. And we talk about always having firepower and ammunition to fuel that firepower. Power. Addie Vander wide is one of those people. Cannot say enough about the hustle from Wisconsin Stevens Point there. Just not the result they wanted out of the net. As Burbridge middle set again, Nielsen there for it. Quick tap from Lee. That time Erlinson was ready for it. Awkward one from Shaw. And it results in a Dutch point. Yeah, hard hit there for her. She was in coverage mode off the block. And so she didn't have time to transition back into her hit and that tight to the net. It's not a good combination. <laughs> yeah, add in falling backward on top of it. Less than ideal. And she just has to play that one over, keep it inside the antenna as Michelski hustles back in. The block was not there, but Vanderweide missed it. No touch is confirmed. She's usually pretty consistent about two, three feet back from that 10 foot line. That one, that was a deep line shot for her. That was deep, especially with no blocker there as right. Michelski had to chase it down off the initial pass. And that initial pass is not getting chased down. That heads into the third row. Annie Lockett sitting on the bench over there had to duck out of the way, the rebound. Tight at the net again, this time Stevens Point whacks it Hope's way, Burbridge in the middle, finds her footing. That has been automatic for them, that middle part of the court there's so much space for the hitters, especially Burbridge, to play with. Got to do a little bit better job of coverage. Burbridge has gone to the same spot almost every time when she hits it. Head coach Becky Schmidt, as that first pass trickles over the net, hopes way. Cross court for Vander Slice, and she pounds it. Get it from the middle, take a shot at the right side, why don't you? I was just gonna say, I think head coach Becky Schmidt must have seen something in scouting because this is way more middle attacking than yeah. they have had really all season. I know, usually it's feeding Addie Vanderweide, and rightfully so, but we haven't seen her been such too many times this game. No, as Vanderweide, Burbridge, and Vander Slice getting in on a block party. Back-to-back -back blocks for the Dutch, pushes this slim lead to two, and we have a timeout from Lindsey Clapper and the Pointers. We're gonna take a timeout as well. This is the 2023 Women's Volleyball Division Three Championship.
and we're back. Midway through set one here, 1917. The Dutch are on top of the pointers. Winner gets a date with the Transylvania Pioneers. There's a shot of the pointers huddle in this timeout. And if you're not in the building, you're not able to see the scoreboard for the emoji puzzles going off. The correct answers for those keeping track at home were Angry Birds and Mean Girls. Yep, Eric and I are both 0 for 2 on the day on our guesses. <laughs> I got, I got one yesterday, and I already don't even remember what it was, but. <laughs> I don't know if that counts, then. <laughs> <laughs> I did at the time, no and that's proof. what matters. And Burbridge, straight up and straight down. Give leaves her, her teammates speechless. Give her six kills so far. Leading the way for both teams, six uh, kills. The next closest person is Vanderweide with two for I, the Dutch. I think if there was a five-foot line, that would have been inside yeah. of that. Wow. Ashley Kopp, not wanting to be outdone, makes that look easy like a smooth criminal. And Kopp didn't even fully swing on that, but sometimes taking a little bit off, making sure it gets in bounds is exactly what your team needs. Still a two-point lead for the Dutch. Tight for Lauren Lee. Right back to Burbridge. Popping it straight up in the air. Joust at the net. Not really sure who won that one, but it's Hope's side of the net. And Burbridge once again! Seven kills. Seven points. Absolutely came ready to play today. You know, she had a slow game yesterday. Besides blocking at the net, hitting-wise was not her best game. And she came in today and was like, let me show you how it's done. Tomka swinging there. Partial block. Vanderslice wants in on the action, and she's got it. Wow. I mean, the Dutch, the Dutch to have the MIAA player of the year with Andy Vanderweide, but how stinking cool that Burbridge and Vanderslice are bringing the power. We haven't even seen much from the MIAA player of the year. Nope, and that's a freshman and a junior taking over. And Stevens Point has to take another timeout. Now on the scoreboard, Family Feud. Name something snowmen might have nightmares about. They asked 100 NCAA student athletes. Stay tuned for the answers. So we'll see if, if Carly can uh, can get that answer. The sun. Well, you're not supposed to give them oh, well, the answer. Well, I'm, I'm, this, this, we don't know what the answers are. I'm taking my guess. Oh, all right. I got you. I got you. In the meantime, this year, Division Three is celebrating its 50th anniversary. The NCAA thanks all student athletes, coaches, administrators, and fans for their commitment and contribution since 1973. For more information, on the anniversary, visit NCAA.org slash D350. And in the meantime, while I was reading that spot, I hope you were paying attention to the screen because we put up the answers of what's something that snowmen might have nightmares about. Did, did you see what number one was? Was it the sun? It was the uh, sun. <laughs> it was, and I have witnesses now. All right, there we go. Uh, did, can you name the other four for the, uh, for the folks who weren't looking? Uh, peeing dog, summer. And I don't know what the fifth one was. Uh, I missed number two. Was there a full five up there, or was there just four? I'm we'll pretty sure there's five. We'll have to double check. Out of that timeout, not what you want, with a service error from Addie Vanderweide, who, as you stated already, has had a, a, a quiet for her yeah. first set. And that's her second of this set. And Hope's fourth overall? Four service errors. Man. Just got to keep it in play. Vanderweide in the back row receiving there. Brooke Fox flying high. But the pointer's defense was there for it. Cop, that's just silly. Fall away with that much power on it. Fox again, roll shot. Pops straight up in the air. Lee gets under the second ball. Fox flushes it into the corner. Stevens Point was ready for it. Cross court again from Cop. Phoebean gets it up in the air. Fox rolling it one more time. Nielsen is there in the middle. Tomka throwing it to the back corner. And this is a great rally right here from two high quality programs. And right as I say that, it's over. Tar Carly Tomka on her, I believe, third kill attempt of that rally misses the back line. You know, neither team really fully swung there. Cop 
Rob had the hardest hit ball off one of the worst sets. And everyone <laughs> else was just kind of doing roll shots. Took something off of that. Yeah, Phoebeing with a fireball. Nielsen handles. Cop! Sometimes it's easy as one, two, oh. three. That is just so impressive. Would have hit a different stratosphere if it was going up. He's orbiting the moon right now. Back set slide for DeWeird. Somehow Cop gets it over the net. Lauren Lee with a set and Brooke Fox with a hammer. Wow. That was an absolute slam dunk. It was like four four hits right in a row that were just uber impressive. Cop getting it over the net, mm -hmm. Lee coming over and setting it. And of course, the finishing touch from Brooke Fox to weird trying it in the middle and Lee's able to save it. The joust goes the way of the pointers, but Fox again, double blocks by Tomka in the middle there. Tomka couldn't quite get that one. Digging in the back row was Cop. Rolled over the net by Saladell. Michalski goes far side for Shaw. Again on the slide, it's DeWeird, and she can't connect. Great call there by the defense. Great blocking for the pointers. Getting a touch on it every time. Good coverage in the back row, but continually challenging the hope hitters. Not only can they point, they can block. And what I failed uh, to mention, it feels like Uno right now. I failed to mention this is set point for the yeah. Dutch right here. Going down, curling around again is DeWeird. Popped over by Salatel. DeWeird with a weird tip over the net. And Salatel gets in between the block. Salatel got great air on that. There's distance between the two blockers, and she found the seam and slid it right through. She had a pretty quiet night yesterday, yeah. but has had a big set so far here for the pointers. They're one point away from giving it up, but Hope's taking a timeout. And we'll be back after these messages. It's the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu slash admissions. We're back nearing the end of set number one at DeVos Fieldhouse on DeVette Van Weeren Court, where the Dutch are holding court with the pointers of UW Stevens Point. And we, we give you the answers to the emoji puzzles during the timeout, but they were exactly the same as the previous emoji puzzle timeout. I don't know if you could hear the fans barking in the background, but the Pointers fans are out there and want to let you know that they in the building. And you just on the list of guest names as Brooke Fox lets everybody know she's in the building. And that's the end of set number one. You know, the last few points of that set for the Pointers, the defense was just caught on their heels. They had players in the correct positioning to be able to dig the balls that were hit at them, just caught on their heels too much. And so I hope for the Pointers defensively, that is a change that they make. Because they're getting to the right spots and they're doing a good job of getting there. They're just not executing once they're there. And Hope comes away with a tight one, 25-22. We'll see what set number two holds for us after a few minutes. Thank you again for tuning in to the 2023 Division III Women's Volleyball Championship. We are here for a purpose. Some arrive knowing it. Others are still searching for it. 
but this we share. The determination to create the future we were meant for. Motivating and encouraging each other to work harder, reach higher, and be who we are meant to be. We are the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, where challenges don't hold us back. They invigorate us, and we will always rise to meet them. For a better future, a better Midwest, and a better world. Discover your purpose. There are over 5,000 colleges and universities in the United States alone, and nearly every single one of them is named after a location or a historical figure. But along the shores of Lake Michigan, there is a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is hope. It is so easy to get lost in what this world lacks, to become discouraged by its needs, gaps, and flaws. Can we see beyond the uncertainty and brokenness? At Hope College, we do. Not by ignoring the world as it is, but by learning and living with the belief that this is not the world as it should be. By driving to understand, to unlock clarity, to amplify truth. By leading with inspired compassion. By embodying a vision that illuminates greater opportunity for all by serving with anchored conviction, using our collective gifts to offer this world what it needs most, hope. Not simply hope as a desire, but hope as a way of being. Because hope has changed the way we see the world, and hope drives us to change the way the world is. Because hope shapes our calling. Because hope inspires our dreams because hope empowers our talents, because hope frees us to try, because hope transforms what we believe, transforms how we act, transforms who we are. At Hope College, we know this life-altering grace is a gift we have all been given, and it is the greatest gift we can offer the world. Hope transforms. at DeVos Fieldhouse. Hope wins the first set 25-22 over the visiting pointers. The teams have switched sides, but kept the same uniforms. That is typical. <laughs> that, that, that is typical. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to point out the obvious. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Um, Statistic-wise, after that first set, some interesting things to chat about. Hope hitting at 267, while the pointers hitting at .095. Attack errors, the pointers had eight, and despite Hope's four service errors, they still came away with the win. Somehow, Hope gets the point right there. It felt like the entire Stevens Point team was there for that one, and it fell in between them all. And communication is going to need to be key. Can't let balls like that hit the ground. And a wide serving, 1-0 lead in sets. And this set as Burbridge flips it up and over. Lucky that didn't catch the net. Osinski in the middle. What a pass back to Kopp and gets the touch. Nice. And I think that landed in. That was a good hit by Kopp. Set up by a fantastic over the head pass from Sidney Mosinski. And Tessa Erlinson, the freshman, serves to Vanderweide. They're going wide on that one with Brooke Fox, who put the exclamation point on set number one and starts off hot in set number two. And it's one of many hitters that has done well and found success so far today. She's hitting, she's now four for 10. 
Feebing serving. Tomka tried to place it. Not quite exactly where she was aiming. The pointer's looking for a side out. Down 3-1, and the tape monster gets Olivia Thieving. Big break for the pointers there. If that had snuck over the net, that would have been a hard serve to recover from. So you'll take the help from the net there. Yeah, you don't exactly plan on it catching the top of the net and falling over onto your side. Michalski serving deep. Back set for Vander Slice. Ride the elevator to the top. Big smiles there. Huge line shot. So quick. Defense didn't even have time to react. I barely had time to react. I didn't even have to move. Right. And another service oh, yes. error from the Dutch. I don't want to discredit Stevens Point by saying that Hope is keeping them around with service errors because Stevens Point is playing some high quality volleyball mm -hmm. over here, but they're definitely aiding the pointers advance. Six service errors on the day already. And DeWeird doing what she does. Stevens Point not able to get it back over as Erlinson came crashing into her coach there. Love the effort, though. And can we talk about Erlinson as a freshman being the libero for Stevens Point? That is, I mean, it's a privilege to be the libero, and it says a lot about who you are. You are the, one of the best passers on the team, but to have that as a freshman, that's huge. And to have done so well in this tournament. And you don't even notice because she does not play like a freshman. No. And speaking of freshmen who don't play like freshmen, Lauren Shaw yeah. swinging right there, missing at the back line by millimeters. Looking for the touch for the pointers. The ref did not agree. And it's six to three. Shaw with a redemption shot. Got a touch that time from Phoebe. Yeah, she wanted a second chance at that. Now has five kills. First one of this set, four in the last. <laughs> Bringing it to a two-point game. And Ella Treloff, another freshman. Bright future for both yeah. of these squads. As Vanderweide is stopped up by, you guessed it, Sidney Mosinski, along with Summer Salatel. If you look at Wisconsin Stevens Point athletic page in the the article written about last night's game, the headline picture is very similar to what you just saw of Mozinski and her team celebrating like that. Carly, did you, did you check uh, their Instagram yesterday to see if you made it on there? I, you know, I did not do that. That'll be my homework for tonight. As uh, some other opposing schools have, have featured you on their Instagram volleyball yes. page. The roll shot from Salatel. Side was able to get it up, and Hope cannot return that one. Salatel really being a difference maker in today's matches. Her third kill, but making them when they count. Bringing it within one, and having a big presence at the net. And I do have to apologize to her and her family because I'm pretty sure yesterday I said her name differently like four different times, so. <laughs> no one corrected me though, so I'm really hoping that I got it right tonight At least one, yeah. as, as Vanderweide gets a kill for the Dutch. Vanderweide with her fourth kill. And Lauren Lee serves with a two point Dutch advantage. Cop with the first pass, sliding for Mosinski, and she finds the hole in the defense. Like that's a hard approach to read, right? When you're doing the slide play, the D set, Absolutely. you come around, and you think you're getting a big full swing, because that's typically what happens. You don't see a lot of tips or off-speed shots, and so smart move by Mosinski there. That was very, very headsy on the junior's part there as a service error from Stevens Point. Marshall sits down as Brooke Fox rotates in to that outside hitter position. Vanderweide stays in the back row. Erlinson 
Tight at the net. Burbridge, we haven't heard from her much this set. Just in case you forgot, she's still there. <laughs> Add another kill to her list. Yeah, leads the way for both teams with eight. And mishandling of the serve leads to an ace for Vanderweide. You know, that's good to see. She had two errors in the first set. Nice to see her have an ace in this one. And that's a timeout for the pointers. Down 11 to 7. And fans, Division III student athletes are encouraged to discover themselves by pursuing their interests beyond the field of play. To develop into well-rounded individuals by participating in activities outside of the classroom and to develop themselves to achieving, dedicate, excuse me, dedicate themselves to achieving their full potential in sports and in life. Discover, develop, dedicate. That's the Division III experience. To learn more about Division III, visit ncaa.org slash D3. You know what I like about these Hopes timeouts is you'll see Becky Schmidt do a few different things on timeout, timeouts. It kind of depends on how they're doing, what they're seeing, but they break off into hitting groups, and then the bench players will talk to the players on the court of what they see, where they, should, what placements they should go for, and just different adjustments they think they can make, or that the players on the court can make, and I just think it's really beneficial to see people with eyes on the play and can see the court better than you, because it's different versus playing and watching, so really cool that she does that brings them together for one last pep talk. Absolutely, as both of these times come out of that timeout. And we're getting messages all across the world, including some former Hope Volleyball players. Shout out to Anna Sundberg and her family watching. She played at Hope in the early 2000s as another ace from Vanderweide out of the timeout. What do you say? You can't ice the server. You can't, yeah. Vanderweide back to back. That's the second time we've seen that tonight. Not from this game, but one earlier today. And it is. I believe we saw that two or three times last night. Oh, no, we got three you in a row. You I've been asking for three in a row. Day. Oh, tournament long. And we've got it. Three straight aces from Vanderweide. Does that mean I have to up my expectations? Apparently. And who better than the all-region player of the year? It was too much to ask for four. Here come the pointers, the roll shot from Cobb, and Lee caught Brooke Fox in the shoulder as they both went down to the floor for that. And it's 13-8 after the ace run from Vanderweide, but that is just way too easy. I believe you call that the birthday cake gift. Yeah, that's just the gift. Please, thank you. Anytime, Cap will take that. I could almost guarantee she could have done that with her eyes closed. Yep. Which is impressive in its own right. Vanderslice pushing it over, going back to Cop. She shoves it right back, and it works. Pointers. Hope's defense slightly off base there, and Cop took advantage. Yeah, smart play there. Saw that Hope was out of sorts, out of position. Ten-foot line, wide open for her. You haven't seen it on the video yet that I'm aware of as Vanderweide somehow keeps that one in play, and Burbridge finds the back corner! <laughs> She's gonna be at double digits real soon. And doing it all, right? Hard hits. She's been in front of that 10-foot line. She pushes deep. When you diversify your hits like that, it makes it so hard for the defense to defend. You don't know what she's going to do. Phoebe serving for the Dutch. Vanderslice, Lee looking around, goes with Vanderslice. Michalski in the middle. And Tomka not able to get on top of that one. Yeah, she struggled with her hitting game so far. She's not following through well. She's getting a decent set, but stopping her approach and her follow through, the last one she had also went in a similar spot out of bounds. It's important to snap that wrist as Phoebe looking for an ace as well. Stevens Point not going to allow that to happen. Both her and Vanderweide were there for that one. Vander slice, rise, and fire. 
You know, credit Pop with a good time block, but sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Indeed, and I was just about to say that you can't see on screen, but oh, and there you can in the background. Transylvania has been watching closely this first set in the half as they're now heading their way out. And heading out of the gym is also the volleyball that <laughs> Ashley Cobb just smoked. Hey, we talked about her getting in a different stratosphere and out of space. Getting one step closer to that. Uh, that ball landed in row 10, I think. Yeah. Testament to the power she has. Cuts the lead to five for the Dutch. Dropping serve right there. Lead tight to the net. Gets it up for DeWeird who sends it over. Tomka in the middle, still not able to get on top of it. And she's frustrated with herself. Yeah, she's overanalyzing that hit. And she'll get subbed out right now for Olivia Polkner. Seeing her first action in this matchup. Side serving it to Erlinson. Going to Cop, the runner. Vander White is there. Brooke Fox fall away. The defense is ready. Back to Cop. Oh, baby. Me, oh, my. Blasting that. The only negative about that for her is that doesn't count for two points. Yeah. For how hard it hit, it feels <laughs> like she deserves two points for that. You would think. Shaw partially blocked Vanderweide there. Quick tapping it over his Lee. She resets to Fox. Thought that might have gone outside of the antenna. Of course, the official's all over that compared to our vantage point. Play on, they say. And it's to Weird. The timing just off. She hung just too long and ran it into the net. Although the block was there. The block was present. Yeah, DeWeer just has such good hang time. And again, talk about wingspan. She has a good reach to be able to hit that at the last possible second as the block is on its descent. And Hope with an 18 to 12 lead here in set number two. We got a timeout from the pointers. We shall take one too. It's the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. and stroke. That drove me to pursue knowledge about health and well-being. Playing college football gave me an opportunity to get myself into college. Goes to Parks. He's in the end zone. That's when I decided that I want to go into personal trainer. I felt I would have a great opportunity to share my knowledge about well-being within Detroit. I hope to reach as many people as I can. Eighteen to twelve, the Dutch on top of the pointers. You see, both of them in their huddles. Eric Van Swall alongside Carly Van Swall, powered back in the studio by Fredward Velasquez. We appreciate all he does for Hope Athletics video production and for making us sound good. My my voice isn't even this hot low. You know, I, I have three octaves. As Grace Marshall throws in the ace right there, out of the timeout, it's a second timeout that they come back with an ace, and that is not what you want to see if you are the head coach, uh, Lindsey Clapper, of the Stevens Point Pointers. Fifth ace for the Dutch as well. And I was just about to say I'm excited to see Shaw back in the game, or in a good position to hit on the outside, even from the back row. She's got 10 kills, and I think she can be a, a fire starter for this team. And that set came too close to the antenna. She pushed it right through there. That first pass, less than ideal. And it's 20 to 12. Hope Vanderweide off the top of the tape. Great dig out by Erlinson, directing traffic back there. Back set for DeWeird, cross court, and she hammers it. Huge hit from Vanderweide, and if Michalski, for the pointers is running around like a mad woman. She, the, the
the first ball is not good so far for the pointers, at least in that last possession. She's all over the court, and she can't transition back for defense when that first ball isn't good. And there you saw it right there, a good first pass. And the pointers get the point with the touch. That was such a quick touch, I honestly missed that one. I'm not, not gonna lie. I'm not saying the touch didn't happen, I'm just saying I didn't see it. <laughs> Sammy Sy, Lee setting it up for DeWeird, and man, I feel like a broken record sometimes because they love that play and does it work great. That it does, that was nearly identical to the spot that Vanderweide just hit moments ago. And it's 22 to 13. Hope opening up a lead. The first pass less than ideal there. Like you were saying, Mosinski, the energizer last time. Somehow that falls out there as it rolled over the net for Hope. Great look from Shaw to let that one ride. Yeah, I always want to follow that to the line to make sure it's going out. And she did a great job there. Sometimes the simple things can make a big difference. That's one I thought was gonna land in. I probably would have played that if that were me. So, you know, that's why I'm over here talking about it and not actually doing it. Phoebe doing her best to get it up in the air, but Saib hits it off Marshall and no opportunity to send it over for the Dutch. A little, little run from Stevens Point. They did something similar at the yeah. end of the first set. Back to back from Ozinski. Not surprised it's coming from her. And Burbridge in the middle, going back to the bread and butter. Joust at the net. Not really sure that Hope touched that at all, but they get the point anyways. Vanderweide and Burbridge still there, just in case. There's definitely worse options to have there, just in <laughs> case. Yeah. Yep. Cop with the first pass. Michalski quick over Burbridge. Fast hands. Gives Vanderweide an opportunity to attack. Shaw right back. Denied. The bank is closed. And set point again for the Dutch. Good effort from Erlinson there. Up and over the block is Shaw. Vanderweide was there. Lee pops it over. <laughs> Stevens point regrouping, but not enough. The Hope defense overwhelming. And they win set number two, 25 to 15. And I love the ending for that. That's just so fitting. And on a block. From Burbridge, get one from Vanderslice. Way to set the tone going into this third set for the Dutch. And when we come back from the third set, everybody here will have been pumped up by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And we'll see what the UW Stevens Point pointers can do against the Hope College Flying Dutch. Hope taking set one, 25-22. Set two, 25-15. But Carl, the pointers have been in this situation before. They have. 24 hours ago, just about. Uh -huh. And we'll see what happens. You are watching the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. We are here for a purpose. Some arrive knowing it. Others are still searching for it. But this we share. The determination to create the future we were meant for. Motivating and encouraging each other to work harder reach higher, and be who we are meant to be. We are the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, where challenges don't hold us back. They invigorate us, and we will always rise to meet them. For a better future, a better Midwest, and a better world. Discover your purpose.
There is a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is hope. to the Moss Field House, the Flying Dutch, flying high so far in the first two sets, leading two sets to none over the visiting pointers from the University of Wisconsin at Stevens Point. And fans, did you know that more than 50,000 student athletes compete in NCAA championships at more than 800 sites across the country each year? Don't miss out on witnessing the next great moment in sports history. Find a championship near you by visiting NCAA.com slash tickets. Coming into this third set, you said it earlier, the pointers have been in this situation before. They are a fighting team. They're scrappy. They're going to make things happen. Hope's got to be prepared for them to go on a little bit of a run because this team's not going down without a fight. They made it harder on themselves, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. And something that I think needs to be improved is something that was a huge motivation starter for the pointers yesterday was block. Mozinski had seven. On the day today, they only have one team block. Hope has six hitting percentage, 0.118 for the pointers and 0.338 for the Dutch. And add to that with a kill from Vanderweide to start perfect placement. And after that first set, Shaw had eight and Burbridge also had, or excuse me, 10. And Burbridge also had 10 to lead the way for both teams. Lee serving for the Dutch, and it's going to go harmlessly outside the antenna. Ace for Lauren Lee. And, and you know, this was literally the juncture last year that Mozinski really turned it on and mm -hmm. kind of took over set number three against Case Western Reserve. Let's see what she has in store as the cut shot from Shaw catches Vanderwide so off guard that she had no opportunity to even react. And it's, it's plays like that, right? Your freshman making a hard cut shot. That's not an easy shot to make. And that right there, that just gives you energy. Falling left, spinning right. And confusing one of the best players on the opposing team. Back row attack from Vanderwide. Picked up by Zeller and Kopp. Making it look easy. Kopp again, just a natural hitter. And build on it, back to back, good swings, good plays. 2-2, two -two, it's a new set. Lee loses that one over the net. Kopp gets it and Mosinski can't connect. Close to that line. I like the idea. There's space open on that sideline from the middle. Just got to convert. Got to have it when you need it. And there's a service error to help the pointers out. We say normally say Vanderweide can do everything tonight. Uh, I think it's safe to say she is not serving. No. Well. She has three aces and three errors. That's fair. That's fair. We did have a run of three straight aces. And speaking of runs, Burbridge running it down the throat of the pointer straight up the middle. 11 of 16. 600 hitting percentage. That's, that's a Hall of Fame in baseball. I was gonna, that is a number you can hang your hat on. Absolutely. You're going to win a few games playing like that. Speaking of high hitting percentages, Ashley Cobb not playing robbers on that. And this team just looks looser for the pointers right now. The last set, they looked more rigid. We talked about defense being a little slow, positioning correct, but just getting caught on their heels. And you see the smiles. You see the energy. 
they're going to keep bringing it. Not that uh, we're the voice of reason by any means, but that was our advice last night. Stay loose, yeah. have fun, play your game. When you and, don't overthink it, good things happen. And there's this, this is a team that does that for sure. Vanderweide not quite set the way she wanted to on that approach. And she still almost got it done. Yeah. Michalski serving the 5'8 junior. It's Phoebeen with it. Lee straight up for Vanderslice, no block. And that's four hits against the Dutch. You see Simosinski on the screen bringing the energy. <laughs> Always. And Pointer's got a seventh defender out there. The net, back-to-back -back points for them. Yeah, the net is helping them out right now. They would love for that to continue as Vanderslice has to cut it from near the 10-foot line. Erlinson, what a backdoor pass that was for Ashley Cobb. And Shaw kind of led the show previously, and Cobb's like, I think it's my turn. Eight kills. Got herself three in this set. And I believe that's the first time out we've seen from Becky Schmidt this match. Seven to four, pointers lead. And for the first time in a hot minute, the dogs are barking, Carl. We're going to take a quick hot minute ourselves and be back. The 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship is right here. It's on us. It's on all of us. And it's time to act now. It's on us to start the change. It's on us to be the change. It's on us. It's on Division Three. It's on all of us to stop sexual assault. Welcome back to set number three here at DeVos Field House. Hope is leading two sets to none, but in set number three, the Wisconsin Stevens Point pointers that you see on your screen in front of you are leading seven to three. Slowly but surely, the pointers building up their momentum. Looking like the team we saw in the latter half of yesterday's game. And that was something that we talked about today is uh, which pointers team was gonna show up. The one from the first two sets or the one from the last three. And Hope out of the timeout, getting the point they were hoping for. As you see a shot of the crowd. Yeah, exactly the outcome Becky Schmidt was looking for. And now Sammy Saab gets to serve. Erlinson from one knee. Top, top in the block. Lead to weird in the middle off the shoulder of Erlinson. What a rocket. She pulverized that one. Left nothing off of it. We don't see her a ton from the middle hit. We see her on that right side more. She's shown she can do it in both places. The Kimberly Clark paper mill is up in northern Wisconsin, and, and she looked like a paper engineer right there. <laughs> Turning that into some pulp. And the over the head from Lee was shifty, but a scintillating shot back from the pointers. <laughs> the best hit of the day for Tomka. She has struggled hitting and she got Absolutely. it to land there. One of four coming into this game. Getting on top of one right there when her team needed it. Top is serving Brooke Fox. Has had a quiet start to this set. So has Lauren Shaw. And it catches the antenna off of the net. Yeah, had a hard swing, but overswung the ball. That net friend you mentioned a moment ago yeah. for the pointers has switched teams, apparently. Again, I think we're going to see a lot of back and forth action from these teams in this set. Absolutely. Grace Marshall served 
singes the top of the net there. Vanderweide going cross court. Erlinson was ready for it. Shaw deep into the corner. Marshall was hanging out back there, and Vanderweide hits the top floor. Tick, tick, boom. Yikes. And just like that, it's 8-8. It's eight, eight. This is a set that, at least to me, has felt like the pointers have had it for the majority of it, and it's tied up right now. Tomka in the middle, rolling it over. Vanderweide, give and go from Lee, and why not? We said, we said she was quiet, proving us otherwise in this set. Now she's got seven. I guess we'll just have to send more constructive criticism <laughs> her guess. way. Not that. Some feedback. Some yeah, feed feedback. There you go, feedback. Because we're the ones she wants feedback from. And someone who doesn't need any feedback is Lauren Shaw yep. on that one right there. That's right, I was going to say, because I'm, I'm super qualified to tell the <laughs> MIAA Player of the Year how to play volleyball. And all region player MVP. Don't forget. I'm sure she lays awake at night wondering what my opinion is of her game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And speaking of her, she sends it over to Michalski, handles it well. Salatow flips it in. Hope's defense didn't react in time, and you see the dancing celebration from the bench. Not quite the push-ups that we no. saw from the Transylvania Pioneers, but I do appreciate the excitement and the energy that the pointers are bringing over there on the bench. 10 to nine, and there's a block, Mosinski! And Salatel both in there on Vanderweide. Great partner block there. No seams left open, timed the hit perfectly. Gotta keep that up. Tomka serving with a two-point lead. Saiba almost got that to land in. The pointers smartly let it ride. I mean, I gotta make a quick apology. I have made a mistake. Our stats Keep it going. team had it wrong. Named for flip-flop. Cop has 13 kills and Shaw has eight. So I didn't mix those two up. Even our vaunted stats team gets it wrong every once in a while. Back-to-back -back blocks. Well, check that, there's an ace in there, but as far as plays go, back-to-back -back yeah. blocks for the pointers, and they've opened up a four-point lead. Big back-to-back-to-back -back -back plays. Vanderwein right up the gut. When you need to get it done, go to your tried and true, and now you have Burbridge in the front row. This is dangerous for the uh -oh. Dutch. Burbridge, Vanderweide, and Lee. Things are gonna happen. Things are gonna happen. Famous last words. The weird handles that one as Lee sets it over the net. The pointer's offense is ready for it. Mosinski sent it over. Burbridge, that was just a little bit behind her, and she couldn't quite wrap it all the way around. A little bit of a higher set than she was anticipating and farther off the net. That's just a hard set for Lee to make. It's a hard set for Lee to make, and it's a hard attack to make yeah. as well when the ball, you're essentially pulling it from about six inches behind mm -hmm. where you would like it to be. And Zeller with a tough serve right there. Hope's able to get it back. Mosinski sends it to the back corner. Marshall has been patrolling the deep waters. Not able to corral that one, though. I just wish we all had a little piece of energy like Mosinski. <laughs> she is just so fun to watch. She makes me pumped up, and I'm not even playing. I love it. Burbridge, slight miss hit, but it works. Back row attack from Cop. Saib just dug that out like that wasn't coming 100 miles an hour. And then Cop, after a crazy attack, digs it out right back from Vanderweide. Lee in the middle for Burbridge, and the timing is back to be it off. Yeah. Don't 
Well, look, now the pointers are up six. six. Yeah. And that, it, it feels like that. You said it feels like the pointers have the momentum. And look at that. Look who's on the screen, Carly. Oh, no. Thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate you. I'm Eric Van Swall alongside Carly Van Swall. And I think everybody needs to recover after that. So yeah. we'll be back in 30. This is the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division Three level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Here we are at DeVos Field House in set number three. Hope has taken the first two, but the visiting pointers are on top in this one, 16 to 10. The Black Eyed Peas are saying, let's get it started. And that's what the pointers are trying to do. And can we talk about, it was seven to four Hope after the first time out, and it's now 16 to 10. Wisconsin Stevens Point. For those, that is the way to come out of a, a one time out and make an impact. For those non-math majors at home, that is a 12 to three run in favor of the pointers. The purple, purple pointers trying to make it 13 with Shaw right there. Hope's defense ready for it. Vanderwide gets it over. Wasinski has to pop it. Lee sets it up for Burbridge. Looked like it went back at Burbridge. I was semi convinced that it landed yeah. on Hope's side of the net, but the referee pointed and said that it was Hope's point. Yeah, I was going to say that was another impressive block, but. That was so quick and so tight, yeah. Dad. And that's why I don't get paid to officiate this sport. Mosinski with a big swing. Marshall again deep ready for it, and Vanderslice couldn't nice. find it. Yeah, he's missed hit there. We've seen her wail on the ball a couple times tonight, but not that time. Here is Nielsen and the alley-oop for Mosinski. Too easy. What's the phrase, taking candy from a baby? Yeah, just another day on the job for Mosinski. 18-11, make it 18-12. As that one goes out the back for Nielsen, Brooke Fox comes on for Marshall. Two second service error. And Vanderweide to serve. Three errors and three aces. Which way is she going this time? No error, but no ace. A block from Hope, but Cops made sure it landed out. Yeah, Cops' approach started off of the court and that allowed her to get the angle off the block that she wanted. She was angled towards them. The block had to angle itself towards her, which was out of bounds and flew out. Very smart there. Burbridge and Lee get back on the record. It's got the train back on the tracks there. The record player stopped scratching. 19-13, that is a tough serve from Phoebe. Nielsen just had to take that one. And Brooke Fox goes after it. What a play from Zeller to keep that one alive. Dug out supremely by Olivia Phoebe. And then the dump and chase from Alyssa DeWeird. She quick checked to see the space that was open and slotted that right through the seam of the block. Nice heads up play. 19-14, sliding around off the block is Tomka, and another good hit from her there. Yeah, Tomka starting to find her rhythm. Six point game now, Dutch are gonna need to get a point and compound on it. This isn't a, a type of situation where you can go point for point anymore. 
especially against a squad like this, and you don't want to give them momentum. You know what happens after they win a set. Going to DeWeird, not quite there. Hope coming, or excuse me, Pointer's coming back with Tomka. Fox rolling it in there. Nielsen gets on the ground, and Michelski thought she stayed out of the net. The referee disagrees. Oh, check that, that was four hits? No, no, I'm sorry, that was number four. It's number four, yeah, so yeah. it was a net violation. She was so close. It was, it was very close. The official all over it right there. I'm so used to putting uh, them putting up four hits then. Yeah. That's where my brain went after all this volleyball. A soft one from Cop right there. She's just so smart. She reads the defense so well in a split second and then makes the perfect hit accordingly. Should I say a soft serve? That, now, now I'm thinking about Cop's, Cop's <laughs> soft served ice cream. Got to get back to Wisconsin sometime I soon. Guess. Can give me some, give me some custard. custard. Yeah. As that one's out from DeWeird, and the Pointer fans excited about how this one's going. Yes, they should be. Uh, Hope fans really aren't sure what to do right now. No. Granted, they haven't seen him lose a set here in a while. They clean sweep yesterday. Clean sweep of Calvin in the MIAA championship, and that looks like that's not going to be the case here against Wisconsin Stevens Point as DeWeird is sent packing. The blocks up front are doing such a great job of challenging the hitters, making it so hard on them. They are timing things perfectly. The pointers should be excited about that. Coach Clapper's got to love it. And an ace from Ashley Kopp. Makes it 24-15. How have we not made a joke about clapping yet? I don't, I don't know. Cop's about to cop this last point, though. <laughs> no, that's, that's what you get for hanging out with the middle schoolers too much, right? I guess, yes. And uh, you're also incorrect as she did <laughs> not get the point. That answer's curse. But speaking about middle schoolers, um, I did tell one student, uh, Kwa, that I'm giving a shout out. So, Kwa, this goes out to you. Thanks for uh, making me laugh every day. We appreciate you. Sounds like he's going to get an A. Michalski to Shaw to end it. Can Hope track it down? They cannot. And the pointers don't look now, Carly. Have won the third set for the second day in a row. Can they do two more? We shall see when we come back. Give us a few as we get set up again and the team switch sides. This is, if you weren't sure, the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. We are here for a purpose. Some arrive knowing it. Others are still searching for it, but this we share. The determination to create the future we were meant for. Motivating and encouraging each other to work harder, reach higher, and be who we are meant to be. We are the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, where challenges don't hold us back. They invigorate us, and we will always rise to meet them. For a better future, a better Midwest, and a better world. Discover your purpose. In our popular mythology, revolutions happen in Silicon Valley, right? But no, 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 the revolution happened here. I think we are starting is happening here at this school, in this community. I see it as not just addressing the first of those crises, but all three of them. The students are incredible, and the idea is incredible. Why not 30 years from now, this is the norm? I've said this a million times, but who better than a place called hope to run toward things that to the world look hopeless? I 
just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Set number four coming your way at DeVos Field House. Hope leads it two to one. Stevens Point winning the last one, 25 to 16 as the wave makes its way around the building. Sandstorm is playing <laughs> and anything can happen when Sandstorm is playing. If you're not pumped up, you should check your pulse. You might not be alive. <laughs> It's hard not to be pumped up when we've had a game like this, and holy cow, did Wisconsin Stevens Point turn it around. Can we talk about first set, they hit point zero nine five. Second set, point one four seven. Third set, point three one two. Are you kidding me? What a drastic turnaround. And you look at Hope, 267, 478, and then zero flat. What wow. a change in dynamic. Wow. 312, the Chicago area code itself. It is so impressive. And you know, we've seen this team, Hope is in a spot where they can't make small errors. The pointers have done a great job. They proved it last night that they can come back from being down. They are good against adversity. I know we've only seen a set or a match and a half of the pointers this season, but you cannot convince me as Burbridge starts the set off the way the Dutch want them to. Another kill for her. You cannot convince me that Wisconsin Stevens Point has not lost the first two sets of every single match they've played and then won the last three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm seeing so far. True testament to the team they have. Absolutely. Also, five blocks in that third set alone. After only having one in the first two. And a big goose egg on the board for the Dutch after having six in the first two. So those two facts alone trading it back and forth as Olivia Phoebe and Penguin slides a little too late. And Lauren Shaw adds to her total on the night. Gives herself double digits. She's at 10. Top whopping 15. Burbridge not far behind with 14. And Vanderweide with eight. The Hope fans trying to implore the pointers into a service error. And I'm not going to say that they did, but it was a service error. That's Nielsen's third. They're trying to give their squad a little bit of that home court advantage that they have earned this weekend. As Cobb comes back with it, Phoebe, oh my goodness, digs it out of the earth. And right back with Vanderwide. Holy cow. Libero for a reason, right? You can count on, her in, count on her in the back row. She's had some hammer, hammer kills her way, and she's dug them out so well. She reacted like she was on a Sunday walk. <laughs> As Mosinski tried to come at it with a slow-mo and didn't get enough on it to get it over the net. First pass here, important for the pointers. Especially now that Hope has opened up a 4-1 to one lead to start this one. Giving it to their top player, Kilwise Kopp. Vanderslice slicing that one across the court. Mosinski in the middle just slams it. Lee floats it over the net. Here's the offense. Masinski cross court. Lee somehow got an arm bar on that one. Floats it all the way into the back corner. But here comes Ashley Cobb. Picture perfect set by Michalski. If you can redo that, Cop will take that set any day of the week. Just beautiful. The block wasn't even set. She can get the ricochet. All around perfect. 
Cross court set for Brooke Fox, no good, but Tomka with another good kill right there. She has found her rhythm. Back-to-back -back plays, they force Lauren Lee to get that first pass, and that's hard. Make the setter get out of position. They need someone else to take that second ball and keep going at her. Here she is staying in the front row as Phoebe struggles with that one. Vanderweide calls everybody off. Now Lee drops to the back row, but it doesn't matter because Cop finds the opening in the standing seam center of that defense. Few people read a defense as efficiently and quickly as Cop does. Becky Schmidt came off of her spot to give some advice to the Hope defense after that, and now after we were just talking about it being four to one for Hope, it is five to four for the pointers. Erlson, the freshman, getting her first ace today. And Erlinson serving again. The quick middle set hit well by DeWeird, but defended even better by Wisconsin Stevens point. Vanderslice Erlinson got a hand in there. Might have been better off letting that go as Nielsen was behind her in position, but not like you really know that in that exact moment in time. Lauren Lee making a hard play look easy. Great facilitator for this team. I think uh, you could say that just about her yeah. entire season. <laughs> True. As Cop making a hard attack look easy there. Hope's defense was ready for it with Vanderweide in the back. But Tomka doesn't miss. And we talk about setters. We talk about another perfect set from Michalski there for her middle hitter. Tonka coming alive again. Started out the flame in the third set and keeping it dwindling in this fourth. Unlike many people's pilot lights on their furnace, this winter season upcoming, Fox somehow keeps it inside the antenna over there. Salatel went up for it. Saab got on the floor. Fox into Cops platform. Tomka with a ratchet strap attack again. Erlinson with a nice set over the back on the pass for Cop. And this is just some more great volleyball in rally form right here. Back and forth, two heavyweights going at it. Tomka with the block and the first pass. Lee able to hang on. Can Hope get it over? Brooke Fox rolls it in there. Nielsen on the floor. And Cop ends it. 18 kills. She is absolutely smashing it tonight. You said she started this tournament with like 500 some. Oh yeah, I, I added it up too. Well, 551 kills coming into the tournament. That's what she had. That's she had 15 last night, now she's at 18. The roll from Vanderweide gets down, and I was going to say quickly approaching 600. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? 551 plus 15. 30, 31 plus yep. 15 plus 18? That was it? Plus 33. I'm having to do mental math live, and that's not good for anybody. I think that comes out to 584. Make it 584! Just a living highlight reel. Making it look easy. Taking a second to tie her shoe, make sure she's all set to go before she serves. I would just like to say that our stats team has confirmed that my mental math was correct offhand there, so I'll take it. You can announce, you can do math. <laughs> In my head, no less. That is, that is impressive. At the same time, really. <laughs> really? Well, it's, it helps when you're talking about the mental math, and there is no mental math needed on that one right there. Wow. Vanderweide, when you need someone to step up and make a play, when you're down by a couple, Vanderweide always seems to deliver. She really puts it on her back. You see her in the back row. She's working like an animal back there with Phoebe's side and Marshall. And she's going to get it done hitting as well. And Burbridge quick in the middle. Gets it done right there. Good play, smart play. She's pulled off the net towards the right side. The line shot straight away was set open for her. 
Good call there by Lee. Salatel with a big one, and we're in the action! Let's go, baby! <laughs> you almost got Becky Schmidt. I almost just took <laughs> out the coach. Oh, my word. I am going to get yelled at for that one. Wow, she didn't even notice, though. She didn't she notice. She did not. She did not. Not at all. Everybody, Plenty everybody, of others Plenty everybody of others else did. in the building noticed. <laughs> but I did a whoo, baby. <laughs> I was too excited. Oh my goodness. That's going to be in the Holland Sentinel tomorrow. That's what happens when you get the announcers into the game. And that's why I say over here talking about it. Oh man. <laughs> Not to take away from the, the actual game where it matters. Eddie Vanderweide with a roll shot kill there. Nodding it up at nine apiece. Did we talk about how this man used to be a quarterback for Hope College and he missed the mark by oh. about 40 feet. Um, truly, I missed the mark by less than six inches. <laughs> okay, the wrong mark. <laughs> but I missed it and that's the important thing. And Burbridge swings, somehow gets it over the net. And Salatel finds the opening. make a difference be a difference maker in this game in the first couple sets when her team was hitting at a low she was still doing well and delivering so it's great to see her consistency uh, continue on through the fourth set absolutely and speaking of consistency it's Burbridge right there with a kill attempt and a block another block partially there not enough and Shaw has the point for Stevens point Shaw as a freshman is this good now what is she going to be like even a year from now? Think of senior year Shaw. She is going to be a doozy to defend. Dare I say these two teams may run into each other in the NCAA tournament in a few years with Shaw and Burbridge leading the way for their squads. As Hope takes a timeout as the pointers are up 12 to 9 in set number 4. And the momentum may be on their side. You see the dogs barking on the screen now. And we're all going to take a break and practice our throwing of volleyballs <laughs> for a couple minutes. We'll be back. It's the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. We're still at DeVos Fieldhouse. I'm still Eric Vanswell. Carly Vanswell is still here. No one has come to remove me as of yet. <laughs> Even the though jury is still out. <laughs> the jury is still out. No volleyball coaches have been hit in the making of this broadcast. <laughs> I'm afraid to say yet. As long as you're not involved in the action, we should be okay. Absolutely, as there have been some monstrous swings in this rally from both sides and it keeps going. Shaw trying it again, rolling it. Vanderslice with a block. Shaw one more time and gets it through. Shaw to swing that hard and get it off the block like that from the 10 foot line, that's just difficult. It also speaks, you know, maybe Hope's block's timing should be a little bit better, but she's making things happen from 10 feet off the net. Not the best pass from Phoebe there, and she knew it. Vanderslice plays it over. Going back to Shaw, the block timing was better that time, Carly. There it was. Ask and ye shall receive. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, and they didn't want that. Well, hey, you know, you've been giving feedback to teams all tournament. And there's been a lot of people that have been taking your feedback, so. I'm sure they study it every night. <laughs> there's some fans out there passing it along. Yep. Vanderslice, the block in the way there, had enough cop from the back row. 
in a different area code. And Vanderslice comes back. Oh, man. Vanderslice, did you see Phoebe in the back row, too? Two incredible plays. Phoebe got a chicken wing on that. Perfect placement to Lee, who set it beautifully for uh, Vanderslice to bring it on home. And that, fans, is what you call team work. Slide play there for Mozinski, and Burbridge couldn't get it out of the net off the first ball. Mozinski, strong play there. Been about 50 50 from that slide play, but I like that in that instance. We've seen a lot from Pop, rightfully so. She's done great, but mixed up on the right side, smart offensive move. Get a good look at Becky Schmidt standing over there, thinking about what to do and sending it right back to where it's gone all night long. Cameron Burbridge right up the gut. Your freshman's at 16. I don't know that I have 16 of anything. <laughs> You know? <laughs> hats. You have 16 hats. 16 hats. <laughs> That's not a cool fact, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> what was cool was that attack by Mozinski. And it was just a little wide. Did you see those hands by Coach Becky no. Schmidt, though? That's right. That was, yeah. Yeah. That's the Sports Center top 10 right there. Absolutely. About the rest of the game. That's the play. We not to only play can out. she dodge balls coming at her, she can one hand stab them as well. What can't she do over there? She's also a fantastic ultimate Frisbee player, if you're wondering. As Ashley Cobb gets yet another kill. She leads both teams with now 20. 2 0. What's crazy is that it's actually still a race, though. Yeah. Even with 20 kills, like she has a few people. I, I don't want to say nipping at her heels, but they're in the rear view mirror. Yeah. Mirror, excuse me. I mean, Shaw's got 14. She's not far behind. Nope, not at all. Make it 21, though. Oh, my goodness. Are we going to see 30 by the end of this? Uh, oh, wow. We might. This match? The way she's swinging it. Are we going to see 600 by the end of this match? I what are we know. at? 588 now? I've, I've lost track. You, you know I'm a Vander Slice, oh get goodness. up, get down, but just wide. Those ones always get me because I can't see the near line here. Yeah. And so I always think that it's in until I see that official flag go up in the air. And I'm consistently surprised, even though I shouldn't be. My angle's just too, too poor. And that's okay. Ashley Cobb adding another one cross court. The head, the head uh, and ref the, is going to override that one from the line judge. Indeed. Feebing was pretty positive on that one as well. Not that we take the player's opinion, but. Well, take that one away. The head ref all over that one right there. Cop trying to get one back. 17-14, Stevens point. Brooke Fox from outside of 10 feet. Cop blocked right there by the front line of the Dutch. Vanderweide plays it perfectly over to Lee, but she is rejected. Check that, DeWeird is rejected. And now Cop one more time. Can't take that one away. The partner block between Lee and DeWeird was spot on that first time and it separated the second time and Cop took advantage of it. She's swinging hard. How is her shoulder still attached just to her? That. The rest of her. Her post game routine's got to be pretty intense uh, yeah. based on the swing she produces. Get up. Put that online and let us know. Speaking of swings that are producing raw power and energy, Brooke Fox unleashing. Turn the heat up in here. Oh my goodness, these teams. This is what happens when you put the best of the best in D3 on the same courts. As Cop pushes it over and gets another one. My only regret is that we don't get to have more volleyball. Yeah. I know it feels like two games. We're used to four was yesterday. Yeah. Feels like we're yeah. not getting enough in today. Maybe, maybe we can petition the NCAA to keep going past the regional final tomorrow. We'll travel. We will. 
I got nothing to do next week. What's Thanksgiving? <laughs> As Vanderweide got stopped up, goes for another. And the timing not quite there with Polkner. Vanderweide comes out of the sky and lands on a cloud. Hard when your timing's not there because then your middle hitter is tight against the net and then they have to kind of readjust to get placement for the block. And by that time, Vander was, Vanderweide was already swinging away. The weird serving to Erlinson. Shaw cocks back and fires. Vanderweide right back. These are just some of the hugest swings yeah. all right in a row. And Vanderweide with a tough angle there somehow almost got that one. Blocked for both teams, but specifically the pointers in that cell. Getting good tips on that. When they get the tip up, it allows the back row to have so, get so much easier uh, digs into those balls and set the setters up for success. And Michalski doing a good job of finding her hitters. Hope trying to find their hitters right here. Vanderweide. Got partially blocked. Mosinski almost found the back quarter. Set over the head from Lee. Partial block from Burbridge there on the attack. Outside for Vanderweide again. Holy cow. That fake play, Burbridge went up. Honestly, Burbridge probably could have hit it too if she wanted to, but that flat set on a line just really adds to the power that Vanderweide adds to it. Get on top of one like that, and it looks like an auger, just straight up, straight down. 20 to 17, hope not out of this set yet. Do not want to get in a fifth set match against the pointers. Lee not in position there, and it's the point for the pointers. No, she needs to transition back farther than that. And she, she knew it, too. Yeah, and Mozinski taking advantage of it. She's a junior, she's been here a time or two. Riley Zeller, the freshman. Serving, Phoebe shoots it straight up the chute. Vander Slice cross court. Kopp and Erlinson combined to get that one over. Burbridge ready for it in the middle. Kopp digs it out. Shaw, tough set right there for her. And a big point for the Dutch. Yeah, Shaw can't do much of that. Did you see the hang time though on Burbridge's hit there? Yeah, she lined she, that thing she up. She stopped in it. It almost looked like she froze for a second. <laughs> she lined that thing up ahead of time, too. And here come the pointers going back to Mozinski. Feebin gets it into the net. Hope can't play it out. Pointers still pumped Boys. up. Look at this, 22-18. Hope still has a timeout. <laughs> Let's see who gets this next point if they have to use it. Vanderweide receives. Burbridge in the middle. Mozinski there. Joust at the net. Stevens Point scrambles, finds Ashley Cobb somehow, and Phoebe makes that look like it was nothing. Brooke Fox right into the waiting arms of Erlinson. Cobb again off the block. The one arm from Phoebe keeps it alive. Banner Slice can't get it. The top spin she needed to get it down in the corner. And there's the timeout. We were expecting 23 to 18. Stevens Point over Hope here in set number four. Stevens Point looking to send it to a fifth set. We'll see if that happens right after this. It's the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Set number four here at DeVos Fieldhouse. Eric Van Swall with Carly Van Swall thanking you for tuning in wherever you are at. Freddie Velasquez back in the studio. Happy he's not out on the court taking some of these <laughs> fireballs his way. Yeah, I don't, but I don't want to be out there either at this rate, but holy cow, this Wisconsin Stevens Point team. <laughs> it's so hard to come back 
from being down 2-0 and to do it twice. Not to mention against a team that is 27 and 2 now yeah. on the season. And they're at home. Yeah. It speaks volumes to the team, the, the type of team that the pointers are. And they're not out of the woods yet, though. As Hope gets that point with the errant serve. That's their second error of this game. Sixth total for the night. And Hope could channel some inner Tori Takauchi on the service line from Pacific Lutheran. As the third one goes over from Vanderweide, but Ashley Kopp gets up and gets it back down. Look at the reaction from the squad over there. 24. Getting Kobe Bryant numbers out here in the volleyball world. She's going for 81, folks. I think that has her at 590 on the season now. And a block right there puts the exclamation point on it for the pointers. And dare I say, Carl, we're going to a fifth set. We are. We wanted more volleyball. You know what? We're getting it. The only thing I'm disappointed in is how I have not heard the dogs bark in that set. We'll see if they come out in set number five. The pointers, again, with the momentum. Hope wins the first two. Wisconsin Stevens Point wins the next two. And we got a race to 15 to see who is heading on to the Sweet 16 to take on the Transylvania Pioneers. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Once again, it's the Division 3, tw <laughs> Division 3 2023 Women's Volleyball Championship. We are here for a purpose. Some arrive knowing it. Others are still searching for it. But this we share. The determination to create the future we were meant for. Motivating and encouraging each other to work harder, reach higher, and be who we are meant to be. We are the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, where challenges don't hold us back. They invigorate us and we will always rise to meet them. For a better future, a better Midwest, and a better world. Discover your purpose. In our popular mythology, revolutions happen in Silicon Valley, right? But no, 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 the revolution happened here. I think we are starting a revolution. But it's coming from a very strong sense of who we are. It's immediately creating a multi-generational community. There's something magical happens when you shift from being a payer to being a giver. Hope Forward has 58 students, I think, today-ish. You know, when we started in 94, we had 47. It's doable. What they're trying to do is doable. Getting people to believe early on is the hardest part. It has given people a sense of belonging to a cause greater than themselves. This can happen. This is possible. And we need each of you to be brand ambassadors for this initiative. We're all aware of the crisis in American education. There are other crises as well that I think are linked to it. The second is the crisis facing our young people, the mental health crisis. And the third crisis is the crisis in our church. And when I look at what is happening here at this school, in this community, I see it as not just addressing the first of those crises, but all three of them. The students are incredible, and the idea is incredible. Why not 30 years from now, this is the norm. I've said this a million times, but who better than a place called hope to run toward things that to the world look hopeless? Join the revolution. It's time for set number five. You can feel the electricity in here right now. Absolutely. This whole world is made of energy and a lot of it is coursing through this building right here on the campus of Hope College. How did we get here, Carl? Hope won the first set, 22, 25, excuse me, 22. <laughs> the second set, 25, 15, and the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers 
had a tall task coming into this building and taking out a team that is ranked, has been ranked in the top five all season long and made it taller by dropping the first two sets. Have won the last two, 25-16, 25-19. And one of these teams is barring extra time, 15 points away from a Sweet 16 date with the Transylvania Pioneers. Hope won the toss, and Lauren Lee starts off set number five. Hope with a block right there, partial block. And every point matters in set five. The first one goes to the Dutch and lights this crowd afire. Again, not the hardest hit ball we've seen from Vanderweide, but she's gonna make plays happen. Smart roll shot there. Beautiful way to start for the Dutch. And if you're the pointers, you can't get discouraged. It's, it's, a, it's a short game. You got to work hard and work fast. It's not always about raw power, and she showed it right there. Some raw power from Shaw. Marshall picks it off the court, and Cop does the same thing right there. Shaw again blocked by Vanderslice and Burbridge going back to Shaw up and over the block. Phoebe had a joust at the net. Lee tapped it back, and it's uh, over, over the, the net. net. Violation against Wisconsin Stevens point. I thought momentarily they called a net violation on Lee. Mm -hmm. Her reaction was so fiery I couldn't tell one way or the other. And we had to wait for the official call from the referee 2-0 Dutch here in the fifth set. Vanderslice miss hits that one. Great hustle from head coach Lindsey Clapper to snag that ball. She had two errors similar to that in the last set. And similar one too, not falling through well on that cut shot. Becky Schmidt uh, had a word with her and a wry smile afterwards. I think she's feeling good about things. Emily Nielsen serving for the pointers and the roll shot from Vanderweide. When you need it most, you have your best player step up. And that, she's doing it right there. She's finding a way anyway, anyhow. She does not want her season to end. Speaking of stepping up, she is stepping up to the service line. Fifth set in the 2023 Division III Women's Volleyball Championship. Second round action. Winner plays tomorrow at seven against the Transylvania Pioneers who already punched their ticket. Brooke Fox adding to her total, trying to punch the ticket for the Dutch. He just Vander wide, your outside hitter smacks it. She comes in the back row and Brooke Fox enters. No break for the pointers defense from that outside hitting area. And the only break they have right now is a timeout. Lindsay Clapper and her squad has been phenomenal out of timeouts. The first, uh, we'll call it five and a half sets. <laughs> and even for Hope to come off, you win your first two, momentum completely swings the opposite direction. I mean, the pendulum was nowhere near them in the last two sets. And to come out 4-1 in the fifth set, that is amazing. Absolutely. And we have a timeout here. We're going to hold it right here and remind you that if you plan to play college sports, you can visit NCAA.org slash play college sports to learn more about NCAA eligibility requirements. If you have been so inspired by the play that has been out on the court here tonight, my goodness. I know I have. I'm, I've been inspired, but I got to ice my knees just after talking <laughs> about all this volleyball. Huge side out here for the pointers. And their side out percentage has been going up steadily. Let's see if they get it right here. And where do you go when you need a side out? Ashley Cup. And that is how you silence them, how you stop the momentum. Pivot back in your direction. Five hundred and ninety one kills on the season for cop Brooke Fox with a cross court tapped over by Polkner and the timing not quite right but Burbridge somehow with the left hand sends the crowd into a frenzy. Talk about locking out Burbridge now is 17. 
Feebing serving it up, and I shouted out a former player for Hope earlier, Jane Kessel, watching this one as well, rooting on the Flying Dutch. As they have an opportunity to take a six to two lead, but the pointers trying to make it five to three. Poked forward by the Dutch. Going back to Ashley Kopp, soft one that time. In the middle for DeWeer. Did she get a touch? We got a touch. <laughs> man, oh man, that was a fingertip that right was. there. Fantastic call from the line judge there. And Phoebean follows it up, sending it just out the back. Her second error on the day, five total for the Dutch. 6-3 here as the senior, Summer Salatel, comes into the front row. Front row is currently Kopp, Salatel, Polkner, with Michalski serving. And she sends it right back. Back-to-back -back service errors from each team. And the pressure ratchets up just that much more. When you're given a gift of a missed serve, you got to capitalize on that. And now that gift is sent over to Sammy Seib, hitting Nielsen on the reception in the back row. And Ashley Kopp does what Ashley Kopp does. And you got to take a moment for Ashley Kopp. Count that. 26. 26 kills. 2 6. She's going to have to go on an epic tear to get 600, unless her team is going to move on. But Lauren Lee quick sets it over the net. Hole in the pointer defense. And it's 8 to 4. We switch sides in the fifth set. We talked about that wind that happens in the fifth set yesterday. <laughs> yes, we did, we did. <laughs> the lights yeah. might the, be different the on the other angles, side. The yep. got to keep it even. Unfortunately, players from both squads have to crutch over an extra time. Yep. But hey, we're going to keep it right here as they switch it up. Eight, two, four. Man, oh man, it doesn't get any better than this. exciting to watch. Just a pleasure to be here. And big nights, right? Cop 26, Burbridge 17, Vanderweide's got 16, DeWeird with 8, Shaw's got 14, Mazinski with 9. It's been some impressive players tonight. That's the quietest 9 I've ever seen from And we're Mazinski. not even talking about the back row players who have just been the heart and soul of these teams. Absolutely. Roll from Vanderweide there. What a play by the setter, Michalski. Deep attack from Cobb. Vanderweide bringing the heat. And the points are for the Dutch. Vanderweide, we, we said she was quiet early on in the first two sets, and she's now tied for Hope's leading killer at 17 with Burbridge. She has put the team on her back to make moments happen. And the Dutch are up nine to four. Uh, the final timeout of the set taken by the pointers. We will hang out for a minute as well. This is the 2023 Division Three Women's Volleyball Championship. a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is hope. 
Back just in time for the fifth set action. Nine to four, Dutch lead. Winner gets to play tomorrow. And the rejection right there from Lauren Lee and Allison DeWeird. What can't she do? I, I'm she might be one of the few players who can play every single position <laughs> on the court seamlessly. N name a court, she'll play on right. it. Also a tennis, tennis player yeah. here at Hope College. Queen of the courts. She's probably got nasty handles on the basketball court as well. As that season has recently tipped off, Addie Vanderweide and all the momentum is cresting the way of the Flying Dutch. <laughs> Slowly pushing to that 15 pointers. One pass, get a good pass, set your hitters up well. There's that, a pass. That was a good pass by Erlinson. Polkner flipped it over, and Hope is going to get called for the double. Good break, good break for the pointers. The, the pointer faithful behind us, making sure that the referees were aware. Just in case they weren't sure. You know, in game three, Hope was up 7 to 4, and then. Came back and it was 16-10, so oh. they're not out of this. Grace Marshall picking it off the floor, but Vanderweide is stopped up by Mosinski along with Salatel. 11-6. The crowd getting into it, chanting, let's go, Hope, except for those wearing purple and gold. Vanderweide right in the middle, blocked again. Hope somehow saves that one. Near side for Shaw, the cut shot to Weird. Gets an arm on it. Marshall getting back into position in the back row. Shaw coming at it again. Marshall can't get that one off the redirect. And it's down for the pointers. Good hard shot off the block. Not intimidated by that. Went right at him and gets a 15 kill. And a timeout from the Dutch. We will take a timeout as well. 2023 Division III Women's Volleyball Championship lives here. I used to never really talk, ever. Uh, I was afraid if I say something wrong, everyone would laugh at me. But then I started to play golf with Special Olympics. It helped me to find my voice. And now everyone else is speechless. Hey folks, in case you were confused, we're at DeVos Fieldhouse on the DeVette Van Weeren court. And we have the NCAA Division III Women's Volleyball Championship at your service. The final set of the final game of the day, 11-7, Hope leads. Ella Treloff to serve for the pointers, who has had some fantastic reactions throughout the night. I want to give her credit for that. A soft serve from Vanderweide, Saib handles it back, and the quick one from Lee, and rolls on top of the net for a decade and a half, finally falls on Hope's side, and Vanderweide sends the crowd into a frenzy. Holy cow! <laughs> what? What? Yeah, Speechless. Freddie Velasquez wishes he had my reaction to that on video because that would have been replayed time and again. Lauren Shaw comes right back. Good block attempt from Hope, but not enough to keep it in play. And the pointers not out of the northern Wisconsin woods yet. But again, she's going at the block. I love that from the freshman, not intimidated. She's had a great night and she's continuing on. It's a three-point game. Riley Zeller, also a freshman. Speaking of freshman, Burbridge right there, and another kill for Cameron Burbridge. Let's give her 20. And the crowd rises to their feet. 
Lauren Lee takes a deep breath off the back of the service line. Puts a good one in there for Erlinson. Going to Shaw. Marshall handles it, and it lands out. And all of Hope is asking for the fact that it went on the line. That was pretty close to the down ref, though. Becky Schmidt told her team to refocus. It is 13 to 10. The drama, the intrigue. You got it all. Who needs yeah. Netflix when you got D3 volleyball? Absolutely. Cameron Burbridge. Wow. Her first NCAA tournament in Burbridge gets 21 kills. Are you kidding me? Not enough words. And it is match point for the Dutch. The pointers need a four point rally. It's up, they go to Ashley Kopp, obviously. As you should, as you should. <laughs> if you went anywhere else, you were asking for it. And, and no discredit to their other hitters. No, they no, have no. Phenomenal night. What? But 27 kills, <laughs> Ashley Kopp is going to get it done. That is just bananas. Has to be the MVP of this weekend. Seriously. Yeah, but Cameron Burbridge gets it done for the Dutch, and they are moving on to the Sweet 16, a five-set masterpiece between these two squads. But the Dutch get it done against the Pointers. Hats off to the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Almost completed back-to-back -back three set comebacks against Case Western Reserve University yesterday and the hometown Hope College Flying Dutch unable to withstand the onslaught, but just barely. And those players, fans, and students have to be incredibly, incredibly proud of the way that this team has played and carried themselves over the last couple days. And this team is going to be a force to be reckoned with in years to come. Cobb's a junior, Mozinski's a junior, Shaw's a freshman. Michalski, your setter's a junior. This is not the last we're going to see from them. Ashley Kopp ends the game with a tournament high 27 <laughs> kills. It's going to be hard Lauren to top that. Shaw as the freshman with 17, Mozinski with 9, and then your Hope College Flying Dutch, Burbridge with 20, Vanderweide 19, and DeWeird with 8. What a performance. You were happy to tune into this game because you were not disappointed. <laughs> Ashley Cobb finishes the season, if my math is correct, with 593 kills. That is obscene. And what, what else is obscene was how entertaining that game was. Wow, what a match. Just happy to be here and bring it to you. Please check out the medal presentation for a very, very deserving Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointer Squad. In the meantime, the NCAA thanks our corporate champions, AT&T, Capital One, and Coca-Cola, as well as our corporate partners, Buffalo Wild Wings, Buick, Dick Sporting Goods, Great Clips, Intuit TurboTax, Invesco QQQ, LG, Marriott, Nabisco, Nissan, Pizza Hut, Reese's, Unilever, and Wendy's. Their support enhances NCAA championships and the educational and athletic experiences of nearly half a million student athletes. And fans, if you couldn't get enough of this contest, please go watch the post-game press conferences for both of this match's teams live on the Hope Athletics YouTube account. If you're wondering how to find that, go to youtube.com slash Hope Athletics. And if you weren't sure where to watch more volleyball, you can do so right here at DeVos Field House tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where the Hope College Flying Dutch will be in a, another prime time matchup against a high, high quality Transylvania Pioneers squad. Both of them riding 
into the Sweet 16 on the backs of two fantastic victories. And guess what? We'll see you tomorrow night if our voices permit it to happen. <laughs> but we thank you so much for tuning in to this one. Hope wins a dazzler in five sets. 25-22, 25-15. Stevens Point wins the next two, 25-16 and 25-19, before Hope caps it off, 15-10 to to finish it out. For Carly Van Swall, Freddy Velasquez back in the studio, our A-team camera crew, and everybody here at Hope College and a part of Hope Athletics, we appreciate you for tuning in to this presentation of the 2023 Division III Women's Volleyball Championship. I'm Eric Van Swall. Have a good night. Assistant coaches Molly Stock, Nicole Lund, and volunteer coach Kendra Byroll. Congratulations to the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers. That concludes our second round matches for this evening. Tomorrow's with this victory, Hope College Flying Dutch advances to the third round tomorrow night versus the Transylvania Pioneers right here at 7 o'clock at the Fieldhouse.